Hey guys, Brian here, and let's go over this game to see what we can learn from it. And a lot of cool stuff to learn, a lot of great stuff. So let's start from um, kind of the um, early middle. I'm sorry, early middle game here. Um, so here, white tries to kick this knight, and um, black sacked his knight for two pawns here. And um, cool thing about this is you know it brings the queen into position which was kind of instrumental with uh, black helping black to kind of get his rooks down and everything and um i like how you know black snatched up this knight too cuz uh then you would see what happens next but um a cool tactic to kind of keep in mind don't be afraid to sack pieces for pawns and better positions which is what black did but uh let's go to kind of where it starts getting dicey for white here and um, here white moved rook I'm sorry black moved uh, rook e2 and if in the game rook f1 was played but the problem with that is that you allow this uh, other rook to come in here and when you have two rooks on the seventh like this it's very uh, can be very constraining for white so if you want to go move back and find the best move for white in this position what do you think white should do? Just trade off the rooks. Trade off the rooks. Simplify, right? Don't do not allow these two rooks to kind of come down here and dominate the seventh file. It's just going to be pretty rough. But uh, let's go to what the knockout blows were. Um, I bet a lot of you were thinking, you know, a maybe knockout tactic, and then there was a clear knockout tactic that was kind of hard to see. So let's go to the first, the maybe one. All right, so. Now black has two rooks on the seventh, and we get to this position, and it's black to move. And so if you want to pause the video and find um, the best move for black in this position, you can do so now. All right, basically it comes down to how comfortable are you going into endgame, right? With with this scenario, so basically it's Rook takes, check, and uh, knight can't take because it's pinned, so queen takes, and now uh, rook takes, and king takes, and queen takes, and uh, king moves back. So now let's kind of um, evaluate the position here. Black only has a queen left, right? And um, white has two rooks and a knight. So if we kind of do the math, let's just assume that these two rooks are equivalent to the queen, and this knight is worth three pawns, and we've got the two kind of canceling each other out here. Black is up two pawns, right? And But it seems kind of like, hmm, you know, a queen versus three pieces. It seems kind of, but you have to remember, these pawns are going to be deadly, right? These pawns are going to help you win the game. So these pawns are going to start rolling. And um, here you go, and white's going to try to activate his rook. And this is one of many scenarios that can happen, but this is the general idea of how black is going to win this game. The pawns are going to be rolling, a check, try to scoop up some pawns, put them in the pin, and uh, here comes the other pawns, right? Keep on rolling, and um, things are not looking good for white here. White's going to have to sack his knight. I mean, those two pawns are just too powerful on the sixth. And uh, white will try to check, but to no avail. Try to activate his rook, maybe, nope. It's not going to work. Well, it's going to try to play defense. But in the end, he will get mated here. So that was kind of, um, if you're comfortable playing like that, then you should just, you know, sack both rooks for the queen and just play with those, uh, play with the queen and the passers. So, but later on in the game, there was a clear decisive tactic that would have won the game for black. So let's go skip to it really quick. And it was here, um, with a check and white moved king g1 if you want to pause the video and find the knockout blow for black in this position it's kind of sneaky you really have to kind of look deep for this so um, pause the video and find the knockout move for black alright I'll give you guys one hint if you guys didn't get it yet imagine this queen is in here right what would be the weakness in black in white's uh, what would be the weakness for white if this queen wasn't here? And another hint, the weakness would have to relate to um, 
what you want to do at the end when you complete your development in the opening. Okay, if you guys saw Queen C5 check, congratulations, that is the move. King moves over, and now you sack both rooks. And now you've got this beautiful fork. And remember in the opening, right, you want your rooks connected so that they protect each other, but these rooks are disconnected, hence the weakness I was pointing out uh, earlier with the hint. And now it's just easy mop-up duty for black here. So um, a lot of great things to um, learn from this game, so let's just review really quick what they were. Um, you know, don't be afraid to sack your pieces for two pawns and better position, right? This queen is very powerful in the center like this. Um, try not to allow um, two rooks on the seventh. It's just too powerful, right? Just trade them off. Just trade them off here. Um, instead of moving over, just trade them off. And um, here, you know, evaluate the position. And if you're comfortable playing with just the queen and pawns, then just go for it, right? I mean, just roll those pawns down after you kind of trade off everything here. And last but not least, um, yeah, this tactic was kind of hard to see. Um, I, don't, I don't blame him for not saying this. It's, uh, you know, the outsider sees everything. So, um, you know, look for look for weaknesses in, in your positions. Like, I guess if a, a certain piece was off the board and if you could figure out a way to get that piece off the board, right? And then kind of look for those forks, those deadly forks with the queen and the king. So I hope you guys enjoyed the game. Hope you guys enjoyed the analysis. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. And uh, thanks. I'll see you guys later.